well, quite a number of people have asked me to talk about the lightsaber, so I thought it would be appropriate to adopt the typical Star Wars bathrobe fashion. Doesn't look particularly sci-fi. Um, how about now? Does that look sci-fi enough? <laughs> no, I don't think so. Never mind. I'll just have to look wise and mysterious. Nah, screw that. So, um, lightsabers. I'm not going to talk so much about how they could be made to work. There have been some thoughts about that. Uh, the physicist Michio Kaku has come up with something that is more of a plasma sword than a lightsaber. But um, yeah, it would be technically possible if you could find a compact power source that is potent enough. Although it would probably kill you because from what I remember it would suck off all the air in the in the room that you're in and it would also heat up so much that it wouldn't be tolerable but it might be technically feasible at some point there is already a military device that is basically a short plasma lens kind of thing it only lasts for a short time because it uses chemical fuel to burn but uh, it does cut and there have also been promising experiments with manipulating photons making them group together and act as if they have mass even though they don't so yeah it might be possible at some point so I'm just going to assume that high tech has made it happen and I'm also going to assume that the uh, whatever laser photon cluster plasma whatever the heck it is that it actually interacts so that the two weapons can collide that they don't just pass through one another like actual lasers so people have said that it would be the ultimate sword well, it would beat any steel sword, obviously, by just cutting or probably rather burning through it. So you couldn't defend against it, unless you have another one of those. But uh, it would have some issues, especially the way it is presented in Star Wars. They always have these extendable lightsabers where you just push a button and the thing goes... And I'm just thinking that this would be a ludicrous safety risk. <laughs> I mean, you would basically have to have a safety on the thing that you flick first and then you push the button because it's otherwise a similar problem as with a loaded firearm that has no safeties and nothing on there and, and has a cocked hammer. You just, if you just accidentally push the button, it's gonna go off. So if that happens in your pocket or on your belt or whatever and the thing just expands into your leg and just burns right through it yeah that would be um unpleasant so you would have to have some pretty good safety feature in order to not kill yourself with this thing by accident i guess if you just activated it with the force just with a thought or something then that might work another thing is that regardless of how it's constructed the actual blade or whatever you want to call it would most likely not have mass so it's literally just like waving a, a flashlight so you don't have that mass, you don't feel the weight, so you don't feel the blade as well. With an actual you know, metal sword or saber, this is an actual saber because it is curved and single-edged, whereas a light quote-unquote saber is not curved and also edge, it doesn't have an edge, it just burns in all directions, but whatever. If you have an actual metal saber, you can kind of feel where it is, you can you know, you don't have to keep watching it all the time because you have a better feel for the weapon. If you just had a grip and nothing else, you would really have to be careful with this. You know, one wrong move and you've just cut off your arm, which is not conducive to winning a fight, of course. This is something that could be dealt with with training, of course, and yes, Jedi are highly trained, so uh, they probably know how to handle these. <laughs> these flashlights? Anyway, I just don't quite see the purpose of having a weapon that threatens yourself as much as your opponent, because any just light touch on yourself, let's say, you know, both lightsabers are bound up and your opponent just pushes it against you and it just cuts through yourself. There are just a lot of situations in which it would be very dangerous. It would be much harder to use than a regular sword. And of course, you would have limited options. Like with a metal sword, there are techniques like half sorting, for instance, which you wouldn't normally do with a saber, but you could also push against the 
the spine and, and manipulate it that way, which of course, yeah, you don't want to do that with a lightsaber. But the funny thing is, although it would require a lot of training to not hurt yourself with it and use it effectively, a complete amateur could just, you know, pick it up and basically go like that. And um, yeah, if the other guy doesn't have one, they will be <laughs> shredded. If you can construct a light or plasma or whatever energy sword, in such a way that it doesn't kill you, that it doesn't, you know, melt you with all the excess heat or doesn't suffocate you or does whatever other horrible things, then I could see it work if you have very specialized training, of course. However, it always baffles me why you would want to introduce a melee weapon into a scenario where pretty much everybody has efficient ranged weapons. Although the efficient part can be debated. I actually think that conventional firearms with lead projectiles would probably kill Jedi's. You know, if they were to try to deflect them with the lightsaber, it might work with a laser projectile, but if the lead just travels at high enough velocity to pass right through the thing, then they would probably be shot with burning lead. That can't be pleasant. So yes, a lightsaber, if it could be made to work without killing you with excess heat, would beat any kind of steel blade by just cutting right through it. But um, you may still die from a shotgun blast to your face. 